What's going on guys? So today I just wanted to showcase a little collection of mine. This is the Lego Batman Villains. Um, this is my personal collection. By all means, it's not complete. It's not perfect. But um, these are the villains that I like. These are the villains that I want to display. And I wanted to share them with you guys and kind of tell you why I chose these specific ones, why I chose these specific versions. Got quite a few minifigs here. And uh, without further ado, let's jump right into it. So this is the man himself. We're starting off with the Joker. Uh, this specific one is the one that came with the Joker Land set that came out a few years ago. As you can see here, he has the blue vest. There is a lime vest version um, where he doesn't have the bow tie. He kind of has more of like a ribbony tie. I like this one a little bit better. I mean, the head print is exactly the same on pretty much all the Jokers. Got a little bit of the blue vest coming through right there on the bottom. He also came with a pretty sweet uh, pie piece. Overall, it's a pretty simple figure. It's not rare by any means. But I think this is probably like, you could say it's the centerpiece because my entire Batman display, which I'll show at the end of the video, um, is based around the Joker Land set with a few other sets thrown in there uh, to kind of flesh it out a little bit. But yeah, he's kind of the centerpiece. He's standing up there at the top. Uh, really solid figure overall. Next up, we have Joker's partner in crime, Harley Quinn. Uh, this particular figure is not my favorite incarnation of her. I just don't have my favorite but this one's pretty damn close. I did replace the hammer with the uh, one from the Suicide Squad base set that came with the uh, red and blue Harley Quinn that's more from the uh, current comic uh, appearance that she has. I don't particularly like this appearance. I think it's a little... <sighs> it's, it, it doesn't feel quite right. I think the jumpsuit one would uh, would be a little bit better, but without a doubt, there is there is some nice printing on it. I do wish there was some dual molded legs but overall, the figure's pretty solid. I don't have a lot of complaints with it, but she is up there on the motorcycle in my display. Continuing our Joker theme, this is just the uh, Joker henchman that came from a uh, one of the Batwing sets from a while back. Uh, I really, really like this figure. Pretty cool uh, head print right there. Real nice face paint. He's got the little toboggan on. And I really like the whole uh, the jacket and it's got the uh, the Joker logo on the back. I particularly really like this figure and not a lot of people would include uh, this figure in one of the videos kind of like this, but I really like this figure and I think it has a place here. This is Calendar Man. He is probably a little bit more toned down from his uh, kind of origins and comic book appearance. Uh, he's not exactly a serial killer here, just more of a, looks kind of like a guy obsessed with calendars. Um, the head print is nothing special really, real simple but it works. This came from the Lego Batman line where they really got were able to uh, bring out some of the more obscure villains to uh, Lego form that w they really wouldn't have any interest in bringing otherwise. This came with the Riddler uh, racer set that I recently just got for uh, dirt cheap clearance at Walmart. But the cape's a pretty cool, pretty cool looking print. Never quite seen anything like this before. You can kind of see through it on the back, but it's no big deal. Really, really nice print on the front with all the little numbers and everything. And he does have some uh, some dual molded legs right there. If I can even pull the cape up. Yeah. And a little bit of a belt print there. Real solid figure, and I think he has a uh, well-deserved place on the shelf. This is Killer Croc. Now, there is a newer Killer Croc out. That is a big fig, and I think he looks really cool. It reminds me a lot of the Arkham uh, Killer Croc, but not much can beat just how creepy that face print is. I love it so much, and if you can't tell from the channel mascot, it's probably one of my favorite minifigures. Uh, it looks real goofy if you put the Robin head piece on it. Um, real, real nice detail on the back. And believe it or not, this figure is actually a bootleg figure. Uh, really high quality, and I really have no complaints with it. Because this figure goes for like 35 bucks, and I, I really don't have that kind of money to throw around on just a figure. So to get this guy on the shelf the way I want him to look, I really don't mind having a, a fake version. This is Two-Face. I particularly like this appearance of him a lot more than the more recent one that had the, uh, it was an orange and purple getup. I just think this one's a lot more classic, a lot cooler looking. And if you're a fan of the channel and you've watched uh, some of my earlier videos, you'll know that I did order a few of these. Uh, from a bootlegger uh, from China to see 
kind of the kind of what the quality control process is and this is obviously the best one of the bunch or a combination of the parts from the whoops best one of the bunch um and i think it looks pretty good this is from the original batman line so same case with killer croc it's not cheap but it does have this nice printed coin that came with the new version of two-face covered it in my older video but the printing's nothing crazy on the front or back but it's really the face and the uh the hair where it really uh really shines this figure's really cool they ended up using the same hair mold on the new one but like i said the colors on this one just can't be beat white on black it looks real cool this is a racer he was part of the lego batman collectible minifigs um He's, he's not a real popular villain, but I think he looks really cool, and the figure itself's cool enough, and I would have gotten it even if it wasn't a uh, Batman figure. But he is an older Batman villain, not many people know about him, and quite honestly, I don't know a lot about him. But the figure itself is just way too damn cool not to have. The uh, head is completely new, brand new uh, mold there. I'm having trouble finding a reason why they might use that again maybe if they mold it in a different color but uh very unique mold there for the his head printing on the feet to uh really create the pencil look from top to bottom and the pinstripe suit's just real cool he's got the little accessory that says to erase but yeah i think it's a real wacky figure to have on the shelf and i like it this is clayface um this is the only clayface that lego has ever made uh this came out with the lego batman movie He's got a stud shooter right here, and I believe this set ran for like 35 bucks, and you got a uh, Batman minifigure and the Mayor minifigure with it. Um, I don't think Clayface would really be, have been done justice if they put him in like a smaller fig form. This really makes him look as badass as uh, he is in some of the comics in the Arkham games. Uh, these are some printed uh, pieces up here, and he's really articulated all over his entire, uh, all over the entire figure. Real nice detail all around. This build was actually really fun to do as well. Uh, if you haven't picked this set up yet, you can find it on clearance right about now at uh, Walmart. But if you want a clay face in your collection, I feel like this, probably until the end of time, is going to be the definitive one to have. Really cool guy, and he looks awesome up behind uh, Jokerland. This is Black Mask. If you've ever played Batman Arkham Origins, you know about Black Mask. Lego hasn't made a figure for Black Mask ever, but this one was a custom figure that I got from China. The printing is not really the greatest on it, and I think the plastic the plastic definitely feels like a different material than what Lego uh, puts out. But, yeah, you got a little bit of smudge there, and that, that kills me to this day. But the pinstripe suit looks really cool, and to get a Black Mask figure to have in the collection, I think uh, having the bootleg version that's that's maybe not quite right is worth it. It's a really cool figure and I'm glad it is on the shelf. This is Scarecrow. Now there's been a few different incarnations of Scarecrow um, through the years. With the original Lego Batman line I think that one is probably the closest uh, contender to this one. Uh, I think that one's face is a little bit creepier, a little scarier which I'm a sucker for but this one overall I just think is the higher quality figure. His face is also pretty terrifying and I really like the uh, hat right here that comes with the hair on it. The whole figure is incredibly detailed if you just look at all the little prints on it all the way around and both of his faces are equally detailed. Uh, the original Scarecrow, like I said, real close contender but you can't really get your hands on him when they redid Scarecrow for the uh, second Arkham Asylum set, uh, I just didn't think that one looked scary enough. Like, Scarecrow is terrifying. And I think this one does it justice, and it's available on the shelves right now with a pretty cool set with his little uh, helicopter. So that's why this one's on the shelf. This is Magpie. And I don't really know anything about this villain, in all honesty. This came in the Riddler Racer set, which was just chock full of random Batman villains. Uh, she's got a really cool dual printed head. Let me pull her apart. And just uh, There we go. Really cool dual printed head here. And some really nice metallic eyeliner up there. Like I said, I don't know it really much about this villain, but it's a pretty cool figure, and I feel like it'd be a shame if I didn't put it up on the shelf. 
Uh, she is kind of off the back, but regardless, it's a pretty cool figure, and it came in that Riddler Racer set, and uh, that's pretty much it. This is Mr. Freeze. Now, everybody knows who Mr. Freeze is. This particular Mr. Freeze came from a Lego Junior set that came with him and a small little bat boat build. The reason I have this one up on the shelf uh, is because I'm just a sucker for these red goggles right there. They look so cool, and this face really reminds me of kind of the Batman animated series, um, Mr. Freeze, that a lot of people my age kind of grew up watching. I did build a new uh, freeze ray for him from the parts that uh, were kind of left over in the set along with a few uh, pieces from my collection because the one that came with the set just looked way too simplified and not near badass enough for this guy. Uh, I recommend going out and getting this one because this one does have the red goggles and I just think he looks a little bit cooler than the one that came out uh, with the Aquaman set a couple years back. His body printing is real nice as well and he's got a few of those little uh, blue spots on the back of his head and some real nice bag printing. Overall, that set's probably worth the figure and just the extra parts alone, because this figure is really, really cool. Like I said, it was a hard choice between that uh, one that came out a few years ago with the uh, Aquaman set. That one's really cool, but it just doesn't have the red goggles that this one has, and all the body print details and accents. So overall, this one took the cake and is sitting on the shelf. Keeping it cool, this is gonna be the Penguin. Everyone knows, okay, a lot of people know who the Penguin is. Uh, he came with this really cool revolver. This is the one from the Joker Land set. And let me tell you, it was probably, oh god, it was such a hard choice to decide between this one and the Lego Batman movie Penguin. The Lego Batman movie Penguin isn't quite um, the Penguin that I grew up knowing. So I decided this one is the one that takes the cake and goes on the shelf. But the one on... Uh, the Lego Batman movie, I think probably is a cooler looking figure. But this one, I just feel like, holds its place better on the shelf. It comes with this little brick built umbrella and some really nice uh, purple printing right there. Revolver looks real cool and uh, typical penguin print, nothing too special there. But yeah, real solid figure. This is Calculator. He came with the Lego Batman collectible minifig series. I don't know a lot about this guy, but it's another case of him being available and me kind of not being able to resist getting a cool looking villain on the shelf. His face looks like kind of kind of a, close to the Riddler, um, and he, he's overall he's just got some really cool prints all around him. And like I said, even if I don't know a ton about this villain, I think it really deserves a place on the shelf. Maybe not up at the front, but it's definitely a cool figure. This is Bane. and. If you kind of kept up with any Batman stuff recently, Bane has seen a lot of different um, representations in film and movies and TV. This one, I feel, is a little closer to what he resembled in the comics and maybe the animated series. Uh, the one that came out with the Lego Batman movie set recently was real tempting for me to pick up, but that one's kind of a mix between this and the Tom Hardy Bane, and I feel like this one really uh, takes the cake there. Overall, I like the luchador mask a little bit more than the uh, Dark Knight, Christopher Nolan uh, movie masks. He also has this really cool uh, tank on his back and a line that actually connects up with the one on the back print, which kind of gets overshadowed by that tank. But this figure is just so cool. Uh, I got him out of the Dimensions pack. Uh, I got it on sale for like five bucks, so this figure alone was totally worth it really solid figure and for those reasons I feel like it takes the cake over the big fig Bane. This is Killer Moth. Um, gonna address it right off the bat, yes this is a bootleg figure. Um, if you weren't able to tell right off the bat, these are not the correct arms, they're supposed to be dark purple just like the torso. Um, however the dark purple arms that I have laying around in my collection uh, fit just fine in the socket, but these orange hands don't fit in for some reason, the way the, uh, the bootleg thing works. I don't know. Overall, I didn't really like the Scarecrow Harvest of Fear set except for this particular figure, and I couldn't justify 60 bucks for one figure, so got him from China. No regrets on that. I think the figure's really solid. I just need to find some, uh, purple arms to fit in there. Um, even the, even the leg print is pretty pretty solid all the way around a few little blemishes right there but 
we can live with that for 80 cents. Also, the head looks a little, uh, it's seen better days. That's not the actual head that comes with, uh, Killer Moth, but you can't tell once you put this on. The, uh, the he he uh, head mold looks totally fine. And, uh, the wings, you would never guess. But yeah, really solid figure, and he sits right on top of Joker Land on the shelf. This is Deathstroke, or as some of you Teen Titans fans my age might know him as Slade. This is a custom figure from China, because uh, I really hated the uh, Deathstroke that came with the official Lego set. I thought it looked tacky, even if it was more of his comic book appearance. It's not the appearance that whoops, I grew up knowing. Uh, this is I, I knew him more from the Arkham games. I knew him more from. Um, Teen Titans and whatnot, and I feel like this is a more closer representation of that. This figure is incredibly detailed. I think I ended, I paid like a dollar fifty for this one. Ooh, big money! But there's there's so much detail on this figure, and he got these really badass uh, custom guns to go with it, and the sword on the back. This figure overall is just so cool, and uh, I'm glad that I have a uh, Deathstroke that looks like this on the shelf, and not one that. Uh, is like half orange and like half purple. I think that looks kind of dumb. This one's kind of where it's at. I think this one really takes the cake there. Something strange to note is uh, pull the legs off. Look at these legs. They look so strange. Like I said, this is a custom one. It's not trying to emulate any Lego figure. So, but honestly, it fits together just fine. The clutch on everything is awesome. Uh, this figure is awesome, and if you guys want one, look it up on uh, AliExpress. They're really cheap. Yeah, this guy's awesome. This is Catwoman, also known as Selina Kyle. She came with uh, this little diamond here, and uh, I really like this Catwoman compared to every... This is by far, there was no contest that this is the cat, best Catwoman that LEGO has produced. This came out in the 2012, I believe, reboot of Batman. Really, really solid figure in a pretty small set, easy to get. Uh, real cool face print there with the smirk and the goggles on the front. Uh, accent the mask, so cool. Really cool purple highlights on the suit and nothing too special going on the legs. Something I do want to point out is that this figure, I don't know how, it's gotten cracked. So this uh, this arm moves a little bit uh, too freely. So I'm I'm real careful with this one because I know this one's not exactly uh, easy to get your hands on anymore. And I think the Lego Batman Catwoman is just atrocious. So this one is where it's at when it comes to Catwoman in Lego form. This is Poison Ivy. I really like this Poison Ivy. And it was a real hard choice between this one and the Lego Batman movie Poison Ivy. Uh, I honestly think the po Lego Batman Poison Ivy is a better figure. But this one's just way too classic for me. Uh, this is this is the Poison Ivy that I kind of grew up knowing. I played all the Lego Batman games. This is the one that was in it, um, or at least pretty damn close. Uh, she's got the leaves in her hair. Really cool print there. Really unique um, hairpiece. And she's got a uh, angry face on the back. But yeah, really really solid. Whoops, really solid figure. And I love having her uh, swinging around on the show. This is Red Hood. Now this is his appearance from. The 1960s comics, uh, real hard decision for me between this and the uh, Jason Todd Red Hood from the more newer animated Batman movies and what a lot of people kind of know Red Hood as now. I really like this character design though, and if you haven't been able to tell yet, I really like the uh, tuxedo print underneath as well. Little purple tuxedo is way too cool. It's really nice that they did throw in, oh no. Like I was saying before, the red hood head rolled out of my light box here. It's really nice they did include the Jason Todd head underneath there. But overall, this figure was just too cool with the dual guns and the tuxedo and the big giant red hood to not include in the uh, shelf. Even though this version was technically Joker in the comics, um, this one just is too cool not to have up there. This is Kite Man, hell yeah. Uh, there's not a much not much to know about this guy. He's a real small villain, uh, and I don't think their uh, their uh, representation of him is really that bad. I think it's pretty cool. 
that they even threw him in because he's such a minor villain. He's got this little visor that I've been playing with here while I'm talking. Real nice print on the helmet and a little bit of a kite build on the back. Uh, this came with the Riddler racer set that, like I said, added quite a few villains to my collection with uh, that clearance price at Walmart. Um, not a lot's going on with the figure, but like I said, I'm really glad that they actually made one of these figures and instead of uh, just ignoring the fact he exists. Uh, this is Deadshot. He came in that uh, Suicide Squad-esque set that I talked about earlier with the Harley Quinn. This figure's pretty cool. He's got some real nice metallic printing up on the front and then a stud shooter cannon type build. Kind of cool jetpack build. He's really not my favorite Batman villain, but I think uh, having him on the shelf is uh, something that needs to happen. Especially with how much hype he's gotten from the Suicide Squad movie that came out recently. He's a pretty cool figure. And him and the Harley Quinn figure, I think, make that uh, set worth it alone. This is the last figure. Uh, this is the Riddler from the Riddler Racer set. Uh, really cool figure. Really nice prints all around on the uh, tuxedo there, or suit. Pretty cool hair, as well as a little double expression face there. I've seen some people build some really cool Riddler trophies from the Arkham games with this uh, particular piece here. And uh, overall, I think this is probably one of the better Riddlers. I'm not a huge fan of the red hair hanging out from underneath here. If I could just get a regular Riddler bowler hat and put him, put it on there, I think that would be the definitive uh, Lego Riddler. But overall, this is a really, really solid figure. This is actually the last figure, and before the video wraps up, I'm going to roll some footage of the full, completed uh, Lego Batman shelf. So uh, thank you guys for watching the video, and I'll see you in the next one.